I don't know if you uh, watch that, that the, uh, he just uh, slide the truck sideways on his legs. It's very easy to do because we got our outriggers set for that. They are all flat level and we can, we can shift the truck sideways when we need to. Um, I will just talk a little bit while, while they're working. I'll just show you a couple features we have on the outriggers right now. So, on this side of the vehicle, since we will not be pulling on this side, we will just use the standard wooden pad that will act as a cribbing. And then, on the right hand side here, we choose to use what we call the side pull spade. It has a really kind of a blade with tooth underneath. And we use, um, this one should be 6x6 six six wood block, hardwood. So this way we can have a better spread out of here. And then this plate will prevent the block from moving and slipping. So we do have a better grip on both sides. And then this this ground here is not very solid. So if we dig in, we can still put some more wood block and try to get a better cribbing out of it. So we have different kind of attachment we can put on the under, uh, on the outriggers or different kind of ground. We do also have a, a spade that we have, I can show you later, that is better on hard top and stuff like that. So we do have different kind of attachment and this, this is a big difference on the, this kind of vehicle. <coughs> The setup we have right now is that we will use the main winch, what no, on this vehicle we only have two mm -hmm. winches, so we'll use the left winch to actually pull the, the load that is further from the truck, so to lift from the other side of the container, we did run strap underneath, wrap it up, and then we did use three snatch blocks, and we tie it up to the head of the boom, so we do have four fall down. <laughs> this will pick the load, but then what, uh, what right it's causing the, is that it, it's not going to work. It caused the vehicle to overturn. So if you lift it, the whole truck will be tipping on the side. This is the overturning moment. But then what we will be doing is that we will use the second winch, the right winch, or the left winch, um, to actually carry as much load as we can from this part of the vehicle. So what we did is that we tied up on the top corner of the container. We ran a chain on top of it on a wood block just to spread the load on the wheels. And then we use three snatch blocks down here Basically what we're, we'll be doing is that we will pull as much as we can the container and then this will transfer a lot of pull as, uh, a lot of pull as, as low as possible on the ground and as close as possible to the vehicle. So this will co cause less overturning moment and will stabilize the vehicle. So if you, take, if you pay attention, when we will be putting pressure on the main line, the one is on the other side of the vehicle, you'll notice that the 4050 will be tipping over. But then when we will put more tension of those lines, we'll reduce the overturning moment and the vehicle will just rotate the opposite as it was, so it will stabilize it. The only thing that it might happen is that if you don't have enough grip here, the whole thing might just slide a little bit sideways, it will not tip, it will just move. Then you can stop and try to put a little more pressure on your jack legs to stabilize the vehicle. So the whole deal is that you need to operate both winches to try to keep the tension a little more on the main winches, well, on the other side, or a little more on the bottom side, we we'll keep a certain kind of balance on it. So that's what Jesse will be doing. And if you look at the two blue slings, they will be used to catch the load down. So we all use the, the main winches, we're pulling it up. When we want to lay everything down, we'll use the blue slings, and then we will just retract the boom in, so we'll lay the load down and smooth on the ground. Then the last thing we did is that we do have a tractor at the front and we want the tractor to follow the load and we'll be turning it over. And then we, since we only have one truck, we'll be using a cylinder on the front just to, pull, just to put a little load on it and make the tractor follow the whole load. So all we did is pretty simple. We just used a simple ram, just a simple cylinder. And because of the design of our underlift, we do have hydraulic supply at the rear that we use to actuate the fold and the extension at the other reach. So what we did is that we just unplug the fold and use two simple hydraulic hose that runs to a cylinder on the front. This cylinder is just tied up to the fan on the bumper and we will use the, the, uh, the fold function of the other reach to actuate the cylinder. So when we'll be turning the loop, we'll just make the tractor follow up with the simple cylinder just to help it out so it doesn't have too much pressure on the king fan. Like we said, it's not something you will do down the road, it's just something that you can do, just to show what a product can do. And 
course, on a real life situation, you will probably have another truck pull up, uh, pulling down on a tractor and uh, some more piece of equipment on the ground. This is just to show you what, what, what can be done. So this vehicle actually is a 4050, so it's our smallest rotator. This vehicle weighs around uh, 55, 54, 55,000 pounds. Uh, it all, this one also only has two inches. There are 40,000 pound winches and three stage boom. You do have the whole mast and boom can travel from, well, can slide from the front of the vehicle up to the rear. And this is this has like a hundred inches travel distance. So I'll let Norbert talk a little bit more about that. Now he's uh, putting with the uh, the ram on the front. Get it tight. Norbert, can you explain how you set up the outriggers on the ground? How you, how much pressure you put on the front and on the sides, and how you play with the outriggers? Uh, right now you see that the uh, at at all time the center portion of the outriggers should never touch the ground. That's where we get the stability the, and the, uh, on the, any rotator, they need to be on the ground. On the front, we leave a certain portion of the uh, weight on the ground to transfer more weight to the rear because we're gonna need uh, weight on the rear. For sure, the truck's gonna shift sideways because uh, the, the ground is pretty soft. And there at the rear, we always keep the rear end of the ground. A lot of questions about uh, do we need to dump the air on the uh, suspension when you uh, jack up the truck? The answer is uh, you don't need to do that. It's probably better not do it. Because when you jack up the truck and you, when you put it back down, it sucks the bags in and you can pinch it. This is what the uh, Kenworth uh, people told me. Better le leave it alone and he's got to adjust by himself. So Jesse will be the operator. So he's the one with the rebel right here. Uh, if you follow him down, you will notice that he always keeps away from the whole, the whole truck and the whole container so he can look at everything at the same time. This remote has a long range so you can stand part of the, the scene and then you can have a look on your outriggers, see if something is floating, and then you can watch all your lines, all your boom, everything how it works. So. One thing very important is to watch the, uh, all the outriggers. And we're gonna have him watch all the outriggers at the same time. Now he's getting the two blue sling need to be tight, uh, tight at all time. Now you can see that he go, we're gonna float the legs on the uh, on the on the left side. We want to get get it a little bit higher. Yeah, float the legs a little more. Okay, now he's gonna use the other winch. Look at the, uh, at the legs, the, uh, the outriggers. This is really important, you can explain? Yeah, well, what happens right now is that most you of the load was carried by the, the, uh, the far second. end of the boom. And then when you winch with this line here, you pull on the front and the bottom part of the container, and then you pull hard on the outriggers. And then this is a lot closer to the center gravity of the vehicle. So you have less leverage and you have the same load. So then you have less overturning moment, so it doesn't make the vehicle tip over. That's what happens right now. It really increases a lot the uh, the capacity of the machine because you are working from from the ground itself. In other words, you're not turning your machine over. On top of that, it's a kind of a safety thing because if something happens, you got a very good chance that the truck, the whole truck, is going to sh just shift sideways and will not turn over. He all, right now he, he he can't turn over. He's going to just go with the load. It's uh, another safety feature. You just need to get a very good anchor. We got different type of speed to go and there. Right now we are using just a, a four by six blocks, but the, uh, they are pretty short. They can be as long as you want to get a better bite on the ground. Okay, we float the legs again. You can do that.
Okay, now you can bring it back down. It's just to show the difference, really. You see the difference? Now I'm going to leave you alone. Now you know how to do it. Try to keep the, the, the outer ears on the ground at all time now. You're still floating your legs on this side. He's putting with the ram on the front or the tractor. You need to uh, work a little bit. Just watch. Watch, watch your legs on this side. This is what the remote control is used for. You walk away and you watch the whole game. Like we mentioned uh, not a long time ago, we, uh, with the NRC, you uh, got the uh, boom up and down in and out, you use them all. That's a machine that works for you. Now he's booming up. Just make sure you keep an eye on the front tractor if you can see it. So he, he uses every time he pulls a little bit more on the main, uh, on the main lines on the other side, then he pulls a little bit more on the outriggers to transfer load, and then he uses the front cylinder just to make the tractor follow up on everything. What is really important is to uh, avoid all the shock load. That's why. The rigging is really important, and the uh, and also the way the way the place you hook the uh, the chain and the cable are really important too. If you go slowly, then there is no shock load. And the fact that we got a lot of reach, we uh, we can do a lot of things that uh, can be almost impossible without without that long reach. And you see now he's got it, and he's going to work with the uh, main winches and the boom up and down. Jesse is doing that for the first time. It doesn't mean that it's really easy. It's he, just really... If you just pay attention, Jesse was using the slider just to make sure that the two blue loops, well, the load were well distributed over there. So the mask was all the way forward, but then there was more tension on one loop than the other. So we don't have to move the truck, it's not the right time to move the truck. What you can do with an RC is that you can just slide a little bit and make sure you're well in the center of the loop. And you can do it at all time, anytime. Just keep in mind this is 70, 75,000 pounds. Combined tractor and trailer weight. So it's probably one of the most common loads you'll see on the line, uh, on the road. Or off the road, I should say. What is inside the container is a concrete block that weighs, uh, each one weighs about, I think it says five to six thousand pounds. They are tied down to the floor.
those, those guys, they are all professionals. They know that uh, they don't want to see the, the container rolling down the, down the hill. You just block everything. It seems that the job is done on this one. And uh, where is the operator? Oh, yeah, right there. It looks really easy, but it's just a way to get prepared for that. Yes, this is the smallest roti roti rotator, sliding rotator we got. And uh, we can see the, how much 